So guys, one year with the Sony RX10 Mark IV. So, in October, very early in October, I think it was possibly the 12th of October, rings a bell, but without looking at the receipt, um, I was lucky enough to get one of, if not the first um, RX10 Mark IV into the country in England. And uh, our American friends were very jealous that I was putting pictures up two weeks, almost two weeks in advance, uh, than they got theirs. So, um, I was very lucky to get get the shots out there nice and early and uh, obviously start experimenting with it fabulous camera the functions it can it can sort of functionality so I say it has that you can actually utilize um, everything from slow motion as you can see here at a thousand frames per second um, to 24 photos per second with full autofocus tracking 24 to 600 millimeters f2.4 so normal and f4, frame rate like normal video um, 4k lens and uh, it's just such a usable piece of equipment um, I'm not going to say it's the best camera in the world because it's not perfect um, but then what camera is every single camera we own out there has got its flaws um, one camera is better at low light one camera is better at autofocus one camera is better at frame rate um, you know etc etc but this camera for an all in one um, bridge style camera but it's more of a pro level bridge camera because the functionality it has and the level of the functionality and the fact that um, it does everything that you want it to do plus more um, and if you're a seasoned photographer as such um, and a compact camera or even a, a, an entry level bridge camera makes you frustrated which it did for me I wanted a camera that I could pick up every day instead of um, you know relying on loads of lenses blah 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 um, and getting annoyed with all the weight so unless you're doing a job you don't really need the camera but you know so an all-in-one camera absolutely brilliant so the shots you're seeing now are straight out of the camera um, from the RX10 Mark IV nothing yet no other cameras involved um, so it's range of um, shots like the Sun here um, and back to the the bird flying a second ago with its autofocus tracking where it ignored the power cables to so this shot here where um, I shot this f16 24mm and you can see the stun burst, sorry, stun, the sunburst coming through the, the cables there um, it's just such a usable piece of equipment uh, where you know it's mad I mean the autofocus system is picking up on these tiny little gnats here uh, it's 24mm wide angle and it's still picked up on you can see it there one of the little flies in focus they're tiny they're like I don't know half a millimetre or something absolutely ridiculous it just literally dunked straight on I was like whoa um, 600mm f4, a couple of kids there looking out to sea, looking at the boat. Um, as you can see, the, the focal depth has just drops off quite nicely. Yes, it's not going to be as good as a full frame, being a one inch sensor, and it's not the same as a, a 600mm f2.8 f or something, for example. Um, but the other benefit is you can shoot a 600mm straight down to your feet. So, 92 centimeters minimum focus distance, you can get detailed shots like that. Uh, nice narrow uh, view and angle. Um, or zoom in on a lighthouse from miles away. So the reason I did buy this this camera is because it can do so much where you don't actually have to carry all your lenses, all the different you know bits of equipment you need normally uh, using an interchangeable camera. Um, wide angle shot here with that that um, building there, the small building hut. It sort of used to be an old net drying hut or something like that uh, for the fishing boats, and you've got the nuclear power station in the background. But then zoomed in from miles away at 600 mil you've got the hut narrowed down you know that hut is really the subject now and uh, obviously the power stations in the background it still looks kind of interesting um, so really pleased on how it can do that uh, this shot here f16 probably I think one twelve thousandth of a second something like that this camera does one thirty two thousandth of a second shutter speed there are some other cameras out there that can do that now um, but most cameras will do it one eight thousandth or even the lower level ones you know the entry level DSLRs and stuff like that are still only at four thousandth of a second doesn't sound like you really need it but in some situations it's really handy uh, this shot here tiny pinpoint uh, autofocus point center sort of spot focus right in the middle focusing between that that sort of hawthorn bush or whatever it is uh, straight through that that gap through that hole there is only probably two to three inches if that so uh, it's quite you know, 600 millimeters as well zooming straight through and it's ignoring everything else so that's that's really quite handy uh, random tractor on the beach um, but as you can see, you know it's, the detail it's capturing is really quite good. Um, these are straight out of the camera. I haven't edited these at all. 
so it works really really nicely um, and then we've got slow motion so this is only at 250 frames per second but that fly right at the beginning was um, a thousand so you've got the option of 4k um, sort of 25 frames per second up to 100 frames per second and 1080p uh, HD video and then you're into the 250 the 500 and 1000 frames per second um, which is kind of a locked down uh, a video clip because you have to pre-focus once it's pre-focused um, and you've set your aperture and your ISO and everything that's it it loops so you can set it as a loop um, and then you can record whenever you see your, your you know your image you want this shot here 600 mil um, straight out of camera by a little bit of editing so it is one shot uh, this is like a halo um, around the moon sort of the ice crystals or whatever it is um, quite a difficult shot to get but I'm really pleased the RX10 Mark IV could actually do it um, took me about 10 shots to get it just to get the exposure just right either way um, and then just a normal shot the next night of the moon um, as well so it just shows you it's actually a really usable camera and the fact that you've got full control over it um, I would say being a small sensor you do have to keep it down the ISO 100 as much as possible um, and uh, it is noticeable when you sort of turn up to ISO 3200 which this is here this shot here but actually when you look at sort of into where the light is in the image the noise isn't particularly apparent it's just the sky um, but it was quite dark then the, sun, the sunset was almost gone um, so quite impressed still it actually still managed to get the shot it was okay and it is usable but obviously it's not as good as full frame this shot here uh, 600mm f4 um, focused on the um, branches there and um, obviously just a sunset shot there and uh, then obviously uh, I set it to spot focus so I ignored all of the um, the branches and then we get a sunset shot in focus um, with all the out of focus branches and everything in the foreground and then it's just touching the top of that tree there which worked quite well. I just got, captured that just as I um, came out of a building. I was like, whoa, get the camera out of the bag. So I always carry the RX10 Mark IV in the bag with the, R A with the A7R3 as well and all the other gear. It's small enough that it can fit in your bag. It's a backup camera at the end of the day. This shot here, heard some helicopters come in, an Apache. It, you know, by the time I changed lenses on, on the A7R3 and put a 600mm lens on, the helicopter was gone. You know, just turn it on, zoomed in, got it, bang. Um, this shot here, uh, I'm not sure what bird it is, eagle of some sort, um, sharp, lovely, no problem at all, really, really happy with that, um, you know, it's a really, really cool shot, 600mm f4, um, sharp as you like. Uh, benefit of actually having a slightly small sensor is your depth of field is not quite as shallow, which actually means things are slightly more in focus, so you actually get a little bit of help from that. Um, so you don't mess up your depth of field so much if you're using a full frame you can have too a too shallow a depth sometimes this shot here horse I was about 200 meters away something like that horse has spotted me and is actually looking at me um, this shot here in Dunkirk one of my favorite shots the mirrored bunker um, it's actually a I think it's a three or four photo stitch together um, but no distortion no nothing really really cool it just shows you how usable that camera is I had a kilo bag with me for the day, no hassle, and I could literally get the shots I wanted, so really pleased. Um, this shot here, not actually 24, I think it was actually about 35 mil, and then I zoomed in to um, 600 in a minute, but you can see, even though it's quite low, the light was a bit random, it was sort of um, hidden, the sun was behind the clouds quite a bit, but as you can see there, it's quite dull in the foreground, but then the sky looks quite nice. Um, but no real, you know, no noise problems at all, I mean, it was a good, good light day, but... Um, it's not showing any issues at all of um, noise, distortion, or anything like that. So, really quite pleased with that. And as I zoomed in to 600 mil, I just left it wide open at f4. Um, you know, f5.6 is its sweet spot, its sharpest, sharpest image. But as you can see here, nice sharp image of the lighthouse there um, in Dunkirk, um, and uh, the tide was right out. I think maybe it went a bit further, but. Um, we watched it come in, which was came in quite quick actually. Um, so yeah, I mean you can see that the sun had just come out a little bit onto the lighthouse, um, but everything in the foreground is still out of the sun, so it worked really quite well. Seagull flying up there, um, but some lovely clouds that day really really made the difference having those um, 
that sort of weather really helps uh, it give you an interesting image so really pleased with that um, next shots are just this is just some random shots I've picked that I've taken with the RX10 up for um, military show we went to um, so usable got a friend with me in fact if you actually look on the channel you'll find the um, uh, War and Peace show video so have a look at that and you, you can see some of these shots here and some of the video that I was doing as well um, so the RX10 Mark IV um, friend Dave came, he had his Canon big 600mm lens it was a hot day, it was like 36 degrees Celsius we were all sweating and there's me walking around with a 1 kilo bag everyone else is using these big big SLRs or the um, the big mirrorlesses and everything with big lenses and you just didn't need it the light was banging really really nice you can see here this shot even this shot here i've left on for the screen for a while is sharp you know all the war sort of shots really really did work really well we're so lucky with the weather because the year before it was actually chucking down with rain and then i would have bought an slr with me uh, or a mirrorless camera but it's uh interchangeable lenses just because it's better weather ceiling and stuff uh but you can see the depth of field you can do some seriously good uh, portraits with it no trouble at all i autofocus Here's a shot of me that Dave took, which I actually really quite like. Um, but as you can see, it worked real. Uh, lovely lady we met, a singer. Um, she's on the video as well. She had a little wander around with us. And then you can see some army shots. So the summary of the camera is you don't miss much with the RX-10 Mark IV. You're walking around. You've got so much range. You've got so much control over it that you can get some seriously cool shots. This shot here, 132 thousandths of a second shutter speed. Silhouetted. Um, tank coming at me, no trouble at all, autofocus, I mean it's not particularly fast moving but didn't miss a thing, even actually shooting through the, the dust and stuff we got some shots, this shot here, low light, sun's right behind that uh, down line there, really cool shot, 600mm, in actually quite low light actually and I was quite impressed it dealt with this, um, and this shot here in the zoo um, of a red panda, really really happy with that, and this is one of my favourite shots I've ever taken, a Spitfire basically buzzing the runway um, but there's nothing in the background so actually it looks like he's high up in the clouds when actually he was only about 25 feet off the ground doing about 300 knots and I actually have about 200 shots uh, just before I filled the buffer at 240 something of the Spitfire banking round and actually coming down um, at some serious speed um, I was told it was around about 300 knots by one of the sort of pilot people there um, and he was going very quick um, but to get that shot of the Spitfire sharp with a little bit of blade um, blur really really pleased with that really you know it's a really really cool shot and just shows you how usable that camera is um, so really really good um, so summary of the RX-10 Mark IV as me as the owner um, it could do with being able to actually um, zoom out and in whilst you've got your finger down on the shutter button so if you're auto focusing you you sort of lock zoom so you can't zoom in and out which is a little bit annoying but luckily the camera is so fast that you can let off zoom out or zoom in recompose and actually focus at the same time and it's back on it and obviously you've got 24 photos per second burst so you're kind of hindered but you're not at the same time so that that makes sense uh, it would be nice if you could back out like you can on a manual uh, like a 7200 for example on a on a uh, DSLR or, or mirrorless interchangeable um, the other thing is obviously a slightly larger battery would be nice but saying that two batteries last a seriously a long amount of time I, I used two batteries for the War and Peace show and we were there for about eight hours um, so it, you know it it's fine um, the slow motion if they improve the sensor quality I'm hoping they boost the slow motion ability if you could do 2000 frames a second that would be amazing um, if not improve the um, the 1000 frames per second quality because at the moment at the 500 and 1000 frames per second you do need to sharpen the image slightly to get it looking usable um, and also with high frame rate you must use really good light other than that the camera is not far off pretty much perfect um, obviously the, the high ISO issue with obviously a small sensor um, there's sort of three things three areas there that could just do with a little tweak here or there um, if they can do it on the next version but other than that the camera is such a usable piece of equipment um, I love using it it's the pick up and go camera of the day um, you know if it's a day out you know I'm just taking a camera with me I'm not going to take the a7r3 um, just because why would you 
you know this is producing some seriously good good images um but if i'm actually working i will take an a an a7 r3 with me and multiple lenses but i always put the rx10 mark 4 in one for the slow motion capability um or the sports stuff you know the the frame rate is you know it's just so usable because you've got that range of um zoom so 24 600 um and uh, it just helps you you know uh do a job and uh, the quality of the images and everything that come out of it are still very high uh, high standard um it's also a good camera to have as someone filming or you know behind the scenes and stuff like that because they've got so much range they can actually stand back out of out of way and actually you know film or whatever um but other than that that's my sort of random ownership hasn't annoyed me at all um other than you know the couple of little niggles here or there of the different things that it could be improved on um yeah so i mean obviously a flippy screen could be a bit more flippy and maybe a higher resolution uh evf viewfinder other than that i think that's it so anyway guys please keep um, watching please subscribe please click the notification bell do for me what's it thing and uh obviously share this video if you can and also just ask any questions if you want to buy this camera just give me a give me a buzz and i'll um, try and help okay cheers